Could the greatest deceiver in human history be among us today? The notion of the Antichrist is not merely a fragment of religious folklore, but a deeply ingrained symbol of ultimate evil and deception across various cultures and religious texts. Central to this enigma is the Book of Revelation, a scriptural cornerstone that paints a vivid portrait of a figure who brings chaos and profound turmoil to humanity. The Antichrist, as depicted in these texts, is not a mere villain in a tale of good versus evil. Instead, this figure is a master of disguise, blending seamlessly into society while weaving a web of deceit. The power of the Antichrist lies not in overt acts of aggression, but in the ability to mislead, to charm, and to twist reality to his will. This character is often seen as a pivotal catalyst in the unfolding of end-time events, a harbinger of the apocalypse who challenges the very essence of truth and morality. To understand the future, we must first understand the prophecies. Imagine a beast rising from the sea with ten horns and seven heads. This vivid imagery from Revelation 13 verse 1 has captivated and perplexed scholars and theologians for centuries. Each horn, capped with a crown, and each head marked by a name of blasphemy, the beast emerges as a formidable symbol of power and profanity. But what does this beast represent? The ten horns suggest a fullness of power, often interpreted as complete control or authority. These are not just decorative elements. They symbolize the beast's dominion over kingdoms, with the crowns representing rule and the blasphemous names, indicating a direct opposition and insult to the divine. The seven heads add another layer of complexity. Historically, the number seven is seen as symbolizing completeness or perfection in biblical terms. In the context of the beast, these heads could represent multiple centers of power or authority, each contributing to its overall strength and blasphemous nature. They might also imply a counterfeit perfection, mocking the true completeness found in divine order. This beast is not a mere creature of fantasy. In theological studies, it is often seen as a representation of political and religious systems that stand in opposition to God. It embodies rebellion and challenges the sovereignty and sanctity of the divine. Through this opposition, the beast plays a crucial role in the narrative of Revelation, serving as a central figure in the cosmic struggle between good and evil. This beast is not just a creature, but a symbol of ultimate rebellion against the divine. The number 666 has terrified millions. But what does it truly signify? In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 18, a cryptic reference appears, introducing 666 as the number of the beast. This enigmatic figure, often associated with the Antichrist, carries a number that is echoed through centuries as a symbol of ultimate evil. Historically, theologians and scholars have debated the meaning behind this number. Some propose that it was a coded message used by early Christians to secretly denote oppressive rulers, possibly even a specific Roman emperor. Others suggest that the number represents imperfection, consistently falling short of the divine number seven, which symbolizes completeness and perfection in biblical terms. Moreover, 666 is traditionally considered the mark of the beast, a sign of allegiance worn by those who choose to follow this dark entity rather than the divine path. It warns of deception, urging vigilance among the faithful. Thus, 666 is not just a number, but a symbol of allegiance to the forces against the divine. Miracles inspire all. But what if they are tools of deception? In the 13th chapter of Revelation, a second beast emerges often referred to as the false prophet. This entity performs wonders that captivate and mislead the masses. It's described as making fire come down from heaven to earth in full view of the people. Such dramatic displays are not merely for show, they serve a darker purpose. The false prophet uses these miracles to seduce humanity into idolatry, leading them away from true spiritual enlightenment. These supernatural feats are designed to authenticate the false prophet's authority and by extension, reinforce the dominion of the Antichrist. It's a classic case of smoke and mirrors, where the spectacle distracts from the sinister intentions lurking beneath. Consider the implications of these miracles. They are not acts of divine intervention, but calculated maneuvers to consolidate power. The false prophet directs people to create an image in honor of the beast that survived a fatal wound, 
This image isn't just a statue, it's a symbol of absolute control, as it's given breath to speak and even to condemn those who refuse to worship it. This strategy of deception is not just about misleading, it's about enslaving hearts and minds. The miracles are powerful not because they are true but because they appear undeniable. They exploit the human penchant for wonder and the longing for the divine, turning these instincts into vulnerabilities. In a world seeking signs, the greatest deception comes cloaked in wonder. A war rages not just in the physical realm but in the spiritual as well. The Book of Revelation, a tapestry of visions and prophecies, unfolds a grim chapter where the Antichrist wages a fierce war against the saints. This battle is not merely a clash of arms, but a profound test of faith. In Revelation chapter 13 verse 7, it is written that the beast was given power to wage war against God's holy people, and to conquer them. This passage foretells a time of intense persecution, where the faithful will face both spiritual and physical trials. The Antichrist's campaign is not random brutality, but a targeted assault on those who uphold the truth of the scriptures. Such persecution serves a dual purpose. Firstly, it attempts to dismantle the spiritual resilience of believers, challenging their faith and devotion. Secondly, it acts as a crucible for that very faith, purifying and ultimately strengthening those who endure. The true battle then is for the human soul. Every tale has an ending, even for the greatest deceiver. In the book of Revelation, the finale of the Antichrist saga is marked by dramatic and prophetic events. As the embodiment of ultimate evil, the Antichrist meets his fate at the hands of divine justice during the apocalyptic battle known as Armageddon. This is not just a battle, but a decisive turn in the cosmic struggle between good and evil. Scripture vividly describes this confrontation where the forces of righteousness, led by the figure known as the King of Kings, clash with the armies of the Antichrist. The battle is fierce and the imagery stark, symbolizing the ultimate overthrow of corruption and deceit. As the dust settles on the battlefield, the Antichrist is captured and thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, a definitive end reserved for the epitome of rebellion against the divine order. This act is not merely punitive, it's a restoration of balance and a clear message about the power and finality of divine will. Thus, the end of the Antichrist reaffirms the triumph of divine will. Today, we've journeyed through darkness to seek understanding. In our exploration, we first encountered the Antichrist as the beast from the sea, a figure of immense power and blasphemy, marked by its ten horns and seven heads. This beast symbolizes ultimate political and religious corruption, challenging the very fabric of divine order. We then delved into the enigmatic number 666, a mark of allegiance to this beast, wrapped in layers of ancient numerology and dire warnings. It serves as a chilling reminder of the subtleties of deception. Our journey took a darker turn as we observed the Antichrist performing deceptive miracles, seducing the masses away from truth, showcasing the profound danger of being swayed by apparent wonders that lack spiritual grounding. We witnessed the persecution of the saints, a grim testament to the Antichrist's war against the faithful, challenging their resilience and steadfastness. Finally, we discussed the inevitable defeat of the Antichrist, a powerful affirmation of justice and divine sovereignty. In understanding the darkness, may we cling tighter to the light.